What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down Sam Darnold's throwing mechanics. Okay, We're going to talk about how you guys can get a quicker release, how Darnold has improved his release, and how you guys can throw with more velocity on this thing while you're on the run, while you're standing in the pocket. And guys, if you're a quarterback and you want to get better reading coverages, reading coverage is probably one of the most important things a quarterback can do. Check out that link in the description that says learn how to read defenses. You'll get access to 70-plus breakdowns of NFL defenses where I break it down just like how I do this, draw on the screen, audio breakdown, and walk you through how to read coverage. We just hope to get you guys signed up soon. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about here is Darnold's release, his front stride, and how he's able to quicken up his release. So we're going to look at these first two clips here. He was criticized heavily um, coming into the league about him having a long release, right? But I, I'm, I believe he's fixed it. I believe it's still on the longer side than you see some of the guys like Rodgers, but that's kind of an unfair comparison considering he has one of the quickest releases in the game, but that's the level, right? That's the bar. So we're going to talk about this first throw and the second throw. So let's watch these two so you see how this is just a rope over the middle his release is nice and compact now we're going to talk about here how his release gets a little bit longer because he kind of drops his thing low and it's a little bit longer of a process to get the ball out of his hands okay so now I want to look at this clip first because I want you to pay attention to his front arm. So you see how he kind of drops this front arm and it's going outside of his frame here. He's kind of pushing this ball down and he's swinging it around. Now on the finish, he still keeps it nice and tight to his body and his shoulders stay square, which is fine. And that gives him a lot of torque because he does not have a weak arm. Usually a lot of guys that drop this front arm and swing it around lose power. But on the finish, he keeps this thing nice and tight to his frame. So that's a good that's a good point on the release. But just because he drops this thing low, they call it opposite opposite equal. Whatever your front arm is going to do, this opposite arm is going to follow. So let's say I just swing my elbow down, my release is going to get pushed high. Let's just say I swing my front arm around, my release is going to get pushed wide. And then so if I drop my front arm like this on the backstroke, what do you think is going to happen with the ball? The ball is going to drop a little bit, okay? So now let's look at this thing here, more of a recent clip of him throwing, and we're going to pay attention to this front arm and how that plays a factor on your release. So you see when he's here, right, he's in a nice, good, strong base in this pocket. You see how he's holding this ball. He's nice and relaxed, and he doesn't have that nose up on the ball. What a lot of young quarterbacks, the mistake that they make is they think, oh, i got to hold this thing by my ear because that's the old school way of um – of throwing, which is which is fine. I mean, that's that's what it used to be taught, but um, more efficient ways the game evolves, right? Holding this ball with relaxed shoulders, relaxed elbows, and just holding this thing in this nice, good, like right on your right pec is the most efficient way to hold this ball back here. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to hold it right here. You could hold it in the middle of your chest. I just don't like the front of my chest, and I don't like holding it up by my ear when it makes my elbows and my traps tense because that takes away from the energy I could produce from my legs because throwing is with your legs and your hips. If you guys have been watching my videos, you've heard me talk talk about that before. So you see when he starts driving off this back leg, what does he do with this front arm? He goes straight back with it. He's pushing this ball back. He's not dipping this front arm like in the clip we talked about, right? Now you see how much quicker this releases. There isn't really a dip of the ball. It's just out right now because he's able to go straight back. He doesn't dip this front arm. He doesn't push the ball down and this front arm doesn't go way outside of his frame. He keeps that hand tight to his body, right? And then on the finish, you see where it goes. It finishes right by his chest. So the tighter I could keep this front hand in my body, Without swinging it around, without dipping my elbow, without swinging open my shoulder, the tighter I can, the tighter my motion can be, the quicker my motion is going to be without even having to worry about my legs. Because a lot of people think a long, well, it is true, a longer stride makes a longer release, right? Because the quicker you get that front foot down, the quicker the release comes through. So his issue wasn't a, wasn't a stride length, it was this front elbow. His front elbow just has to make sure that it doesn't swing outside of his frame so the back elbow does the same thing. If he can keep this front arm nice and tight to his frame, keep his shoulders square and when he finishes he stays here the release is going to be quick for him and the ball is going to jump off of his hand let's watch it again one more time so just a dart over the middle very quick release great job here by Darnold. now so we're going to be taking a look at this though so this is the throw i was talking about here but there are a couple key points on this when he's throwing this deep ball downfield let's watch it full speed so he's just throwing this thing probably 40 50 yards downfield on this deep post this is at his pro day before he entered the draft so when he's here and he takes this hitch, again, I want you to see how relaxed he is with his upper half, right? Elbows are relaxed, traps are relaxed, holding this ball in this nice, good ball carriage right here. He's not lifting this thing up to his ear. What a lot of people do when they hitch up to throw deep is they'll hitch up and they will bring that ball up high. They'll hitch and then they'll bring the ball up high, right? But you want to be as relaxed as you can and have a quick trigger because the quicker your trigger is, and that's when you start your shoulders going back and your front foot going down, the quicker the ball is going to be able to get out the more torque I'm going to have. So 
So you see when he starts to drive off of this back leg how fast he gets the front foot down. And as he's pushing off his back leg and the front foot comes down, his shoulders are going back. They call that dissociation, right? That's how you create torque on the throw. He pushes, gets the front foot down now. In this position here with your front foot in the ground, slight bend, so we got a lot of ground force. What a lot of quarterbacks like to do is they swing this elbow out of here, they swing that shoulder, and then they push their head out of it. And what that does is that will push your follow-through outside of your frame because your body's split down that midline. So whatever your front side does, the opposite side, your throwing side, is going to follow. So you got to make sure that you keep this front hand tight. You see how he's here. He pushes the ball back, and then he keeps it nice and tight to his frame. Pushes the ball back, keeps it tight to his frame, trying to keep his head as level as he can. He leans out of it a little bit, and if we lean a little bit with my head, my release gets pushed outside of my frame, right? But ultimately, keeps this front arm tight to maintain torque. As his back hip is driving through, front hand stays tight, and that's what's going to provide this ball to go 50 yards downfield, 60 yards downfield, however far you can throw it. But the mistake guys make on a deep ball is when they hitch up here, this front stride won't get down. They'll have a long stride or they'll dip this shoulder too much. Or what they'll do is they'll take this front arm and swing it around for power. All your power comes from your back leg and from your hips. You want to start the throw from your back leg and then your hip wants to, wants to drive through. So you want to turn ground force into rotational force. So ground force you want to think of it like a pitcher, right? Pitchers get that power from their legs when they push off of that rubber. Quarterback's the same thing. You're in a wide base, though. You're still pushing off that rubber, but your front foot's already out there to catch you because your base is wide. And that's what creates a quick front stride. Now you can turn that ground force into rotational force, getting your hip and your core through before the ball. You see how the ball is trailing his hip? That's how you're going to get torque. But as long as you don't swing that front arm open and you get to those key points, you get the hip coming through before the ball, you're in a slight bend with your front knee, you pushed off the back leg, you're going to have a lot of velocity on this ball, and you're going to be able to throw this ball a little bit deeper. So let's watch it again full speed one more time. So that front arm dips, we already talked about that, but being able to drive this ball downfield, I need to produce ground force, turn it into rotational force. So now we're going to be taking a look at him throwing on the run here. So let's watch it full speed, then we'll break it down. So you see how he's out of the pocket, escapes the pocket. Now we're going to talk about on the run when you've got to make these off-platform throws, right? So what I mean by that, by off-platform, I mean this isn't like a basic sprint out. This isn't where he turns and runs and he's able to square up the target and it's a designed play. This is, okay, I take my drop, I got to buy a little bit of time, I got to be able to extend this play. So when I do that and you throw off-platform, the two keys here, anytime you throw off-platform is really, well, on off-platform on the run, is your throwing side leg and your shoulders. Those are the two keys. So when you step to the target here, when you step at the target, you want to step with your throwing side leg in the direction of the target. Now, he does open up this shoulder a little bit soon because what we're trying to get at is the second you step at this target, but again, this is a hard thing to do, especially when you got a pass rush coming at you, especially when you're playing in as fast of a game as, um, it, as the NFL, right? It's a hard thing to do because you can't think about all this stuff out there. There's something that comes with reps upon reps upon reps. That's why these guys practice so dang much, right? So when he comes out, you see how his shoulders are going back right here. I would like in this position when his shoulders to go back for his right leg to be in the ground, okay? A great guy to, t to watch with that is a Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, these guys that are so great about getting out of the pocket and being off platform, being able to put their right foot in the ground, shoulders back, and get the ball out. See how he's stepping with the left leg, and then his shoulders are going back, and he's starting this backstroke. What's going to happen is, is when he gets that right foot in the ground, his hips are going to be towards the target. If you're not, if you don't have this front shoulder closed, you're going to lose a little bit of torque, right? I think he could have driven this ball down the field a little bit better if he were to step with the right leg, and as he's stepping with the right leg, close that front shoulder, and that starts the backstroke, so your hips can kind of coil through, and you could swing this thing. But he kind of saves himself here with this front arm, right? Because what a lot of guys do on the run, especially off platform, why people tell you by People don't teach this kind of thing. Why, why your quarterback coach might teach, you got to get out, you got to chop your feet, you got to get your feet, you got to get your shoulder on the target. And if you don't have that, you don't make the throw, right? Why people don't teach that is because they don't understand the power of this front shoulder. Because if this front shoulder were to swing open, and you see how he keeps it nice and tight and he kind of has that coil to it. His hip is still coming through before the ball. The ball would completely die on him if he started opening up this front shoulder. But because he keeps this front hand tight, because he's here and he pulls it tight to his body and gets in this position to throw, he, he has a little bit more torque. He doesn't swing his shoulder open. It's almost like more of a whip with his back hip and with this ball when he gets that right foot anchored in the ground. Okay, So again, ball could add a little bit more velocity to it, but again, it's a very tough throw. I just think if you get that for quarterbacks who are trying to 
to work on throwing on the run, working on getting their right foot in the ground. And as your right foot's going in the ground, your shoulders are rotating back to create that almost slingshot to get the ball out. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's watch it again one more time. So getting out of the pocket. Not a really good throw, honestly. I just think we could add a little bit more on it. And for quarterbacks who are trying to work on throwing on the run, try to get that right foot in the ground, your throwing side foot. If you're a lefty, it's your left foot, and that's when your shoulders go back. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. Again, if you want to get better at reading defenses, you want to understand coverages, a football IQ aspect of the game, check out that link in the description, guys. And please leave in the comments any questions you have or who you'd like to see me break down next. I'll see you guys next time.